Peripheral edema results in the swelling of your legs, feet and ankles. It may also involve the swelling of your hands and arms in a few cases. It is due to the buildup of the fluids surrounding the tissues in your legs and arms. When your blood was leaky in nature, a larger amount of the fluids could pass through the blood vessels that could be accumulated in the surrounding tissues. This may result in swelling at the lower extremities. Swelling of your legs may be a temporary condition that may be associated with a few lifestyle habits. Prolonged sitting or standing can bring a buildup of the fluids in our legs, causing a swelling. Excess body weight can also lead to this condition. In pregnancy, hormonal changes and increased body volume may also develop leg swelling. However, edema may also result from other reasons which are significant and chronic in nature. Swelling of the legs for longer periods may indicate any defect in your cardiovascular system. The heart is the pumping machine that can pump the blood efficiently towards each and every organ of the body. However, when the working efficiency of the heart is reduced, it is unable to pump blood efficiently to the lower extremities like legs, ankles and feet. This may result in the buildup of the fluids. Sometimes the swelling may also be possible due to a drop in blood flow. This may be due to the formation of a clot in the deep veins. This condition is called deep vein thrombosis, which arrests the blood flow to the veins, leading to unilateral leg swelling. It results in pain, redness, and a feeling of warmth in your legs. Damage to the veins also fails to return the blood to the heart. That may result in the pooling of the blood in the veins at the legs. This condition is called varicose veins, which results in the swelling in the legs. High blood pressure can also lead to the edema. If you're having chronic hypertension, your blood vessels may lose the elastic property. A high pressure can also force fluids to enter into the tissues, which can be accumulated, leading to swelling and edema. Another reason for a peripheral edema is any dysfunction of your kidneys. Kidneys are the important organs that are responsible for the filtration and excretion of the excess body fluids. When they are not working properly, the sodium and water are more retained in the body. This may result in the swelling in your legs. In a few people, damage or inflammation to the kidney may result in the loss of proteins in the urine. This reduces the levels of proteins in the blood, like albumin. Albumin plays an important role in binding with many of the lipid components in the blood. This prevents the leaking of fluids into the tissues. When the albumin levels are reduced, it results in more fluid leakage, leading to an increased risk of edema formation. Another reason for leg swelling is the damaged liver. The liver is the important organ that produces the albumin. In people with liver damage, albumin production is reduced, which results in the decreased binding of lipid components in the blood. This results in the increased fluid leakage into the tissues, leading to edema. Cirrhosis of the liver can also increase the blood pressure in the portal circulation. This condition is called portal hypertension. This can also contribute to peripheral edema and accumulation of fluids in the abdomen. Many of the medications can modify fluids in your body and the working of your arteries. Few of them alter your blood flow through the arteries and a few others affect filtration in your kidneys, causing a buildup of fluids. Let's discuss the medications that are highly associated with swelling of your legs. The most common medications that cause swelling of your legs are the calcium channel blockers. These medications are commonly known as CCBs and they are often used to control high blood pressure. Few of them are also used to control cardiac arrhythmias. Among them, medications like amlodipine, nifedipine, and felodipine are a few examples that belong to the dihydropyridine category. They are selected on the blood vessels and produce vasodilation. Diltiazem is another CCB that can act both on blood vessels and the heart. On the other hand, verapamil is another CCB that mainly acts on the heart with little activity on blood vessels. Among these, dihydropyridines like amlodipine and nifedipine are highly associated with the induction of leg swelling. Calcium is required for the contraction of blood vessels. The entry of calcium into blood vessels is mediated through voltage-gated calcium channels on the blood vessels. CCBs block these ion channels and prevent the entry of calcium. 
This results in the relaxation of the arterial smooth muscle and produces the dilation of your blood vessels. This produces a drop in your blood pressure. On the larger arteries, this is a favorable effect and reduces arterial pressure. Due to dilation of arteries, a larger amount of blood reaches the capillaries. This increases capillary pressure, resulting in fluid leakage into the tissues. Therefore, CCBS with direct action of arteries will have a pronounced effect on inducing edema. So if you take either of these two medications, swelling of your legs is common. You may notice swelling at the ankles and foot. Interestingly, this edema cannot be corrected by use of diuretics. Diuretics are used to increase the excretion of excess body fluids that are accumulated in the body. But calcium channel blockers are not producing the excess body volume. They're only increasing the leaking of fluids from capillaries into the surrounding tissues in the legs. Therefore, diuretics are not effective in relieving leg edema caused by CCBs. However, the leg swelling can be controlled by either reducing the dose of CCBs or using non-dehydropyridine calcium channel blockers. Adding other antihypertensive drugs like ACE inhibitors or ARBs can improve this condition. The second one is corticosteroids. Medications like prednisone, dexamethasone, hydrocortisone, and methylprednisolone are used to control the inflammation in the body. Corticosteroids can cause retention of sodium in the body. This may result in fluid accumulation and an increase in the edema and weight gain. They also alter the capillary permeability, leading to increased fluid leakage. However, this peripheral edema is dose-dependent. That means the extent of swelling increases with the dose of steroids you are taking. Therefore, when you are using the corticosteroids at higher doses, you can observe significant fluid retention and swelling in your legs. Long-term use of corticosteroids may also have adverse effects on your body. They may increase your blood pressure and even increase sugar levels. This may also impact the swelling of your legs by modifying viscosity and blood flow. Hormonal therapy oral contraceptives can also increase the risk of leg swelling. Estrogens can increase the sodium retention that results in the fluid accumulation in the body. They also increase the vascular permeability leading to peripheral edema. Therefore, when you are using oral contraceptives, there may be a chance of ankle swelling. Such effects on your legs can also be observed when you are under hormonal replacement therapy. Women with menopause may be given a few hormones externally to relieve symptoms. Such treatments may be linked with swelling of legs. Tamoxifen is an estrogen receptor antagonist that is used to treat breast cancer. It acts as a modulator on estrogen receptors. Use of this medication is also linked with leg swelling. Antidepressants selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like fluoxetine, citrulline, and paroxetine are one category of drugs commonly known as SSRIs. They are given to control depressive symptoms. These medications can increase the serotonin levels in your brain. Serotonin plays an important role in producing the dilation of your blood vessels. Therefore, SSRIs can produce a vasodilation that may result in fluid retention. This can increase the risk of leg swelling. Another category of antidepressants is the TCAs, tricyclic antidepressants. Medications like amitriptyline and nortriptyline can produce imbalances in the sodium levels in the body. Therefore, whenever you are using antidepressants like SSRIs or TCAs, you may observe a mild peripheral edema. Even though it is mild, it may be persistent due to the chronic use of these antidepressants. In case of significant swelling, the dose may be reduced or it may be switched to alternative medicines to improve symptoms. Antidiabetic medications. Among these antidiabetics, pioglitazone and rosaglitazone are the two important medications that are significantly associated with peripheral edema. These two medications are called thiazolidinones or glitazones. Glitazones can increase the insulin sensitivity. This can reduce the excessive glucose levels in the body. However, they can also increase the sodium reabsorption, which results in fluid retention. This increases the development of peripheral edema and weight gain, and it can even increase the risk of heart failure. Therefore, in diabetic people, glitazones should be carefully used. In people with existing heart failure, Glitazones should be avoided due to their property of fluid retention. 
beta blockers. Beta blockers like metaprolol, propranolol and carvedilol can also increase fluid retention when they are used for chronic periods. Beta blockers can block the beta-1 receptors on the heart, thereby reducing the cardiac force of contraction as well as the rate of contraction. This can reduce the circulation. Therefore, on long-term use of beta blockers, they can increase the edema and fluid retention. This particularly happens in the lower extremities with chronic use of beta blockers. The swelling produced by beta blockers depends on the dose. At higher doses, they can have an increased risk of leg swelling. Vasodilators. Minoxidil is one of the medications that acts like a vasodilator. Previously, it was used to control hypertension, but nowadays it is only used topically to promote hair growth. It acts by opening potassium channels, which produces hyperpolarization leading to vasodilation. This improves the blood flow to the hair follicles that promotes hair growth. Even though it is used topically, minoxidil can increase the risk of peripheral edema when it is significantly reached to the systemic circulation. Another medication is hydralazine. Hydralazine acts as a direct vasodilator. It can be used in the treatment of severe hypertension. It can be given by intravenous route in conditions of hypertensive emergency or urgency. Due to vasodilation, this medication can increase fluid retention and capillary permeability. This results in the swelling of the legs and ankles. Anti-cancer agents. Cancer treatment involves the use of multiple medications and it is associated with a high incidence of side effects. Many anti-cancer medications affect multiple organs in the body. A few of them are also linked with peripheral edema. Docetaxel is a taxane derivative that can produce fluid retention. Imatinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor that can also increase fluid retention. Diuretics are required with the use of anti-cancer agents to control peripheral edema. These are the few medications that produce peripheral edema. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.